Welcome to Navigating Texas Workforce Commission for Musicians, an interactive panel discussion. Fridays at 1 p.m. Brought to you by the Austin Federation of Musicians and with the Unemployment Compensation Advisory Committee. The Unemployment Compensation Advisory Committee are members of the Austin Federation of Musicians, Local 433 of the American Federation of Musicians, a.k.a. the Musicians Union. Uh, some of us work as uh, contractor 1099 workers, and others work as employee W-2 workers in various aspects of the music industry. The goal of this session is to share our experiences, including trials and tribulations related to the Texas Workforce Commission, or TWC, with other musicians in the state of Texas to aid in navigating the TWC application process. We are not experts in unemployment assistance. We are musicians. The information contained herein does not constitute either legal advice or an official pronouncement or a position of the Austin Federation of Musicians, but rather is only the personal opinions of the panelists. The panelists do not give legal advice or make official rulings on agency matters, should not be cited as authorities in any matter before the agency or when dealing with agency staff about a case, and must minimize their involvement with administrative processes. They also do not give legal advice on any other matter, and any information they should give should not be used as a basis for taking any employment-related action. Before taking any employment action that could adversely affect an employee, or before using any sample form or policy you may obtain from this group, you should consult a licensed private sector employment law attorney of your choice. All right, welcome back. This is uh, Navigating Texas Workforce Commission for Musicians uh, for October 30th, 2020. And uh, yes, we are we're working on that title. We'll see. <laughs> but uh, yeah, joining me are, are Russell and Mark. Hello, fellas. Thank you for being here. Howdy. Yeah. Uh, we always start with the websites, and we've just been mentioning that they're there. If you are just starting with uh, unemployment assistance or, or the Texas Workforce Commission, um, you'll probably want to start with the links that we have in the below um, uh, show comments there. Um, it starts with the, the TWC website itself, which is not that easy to navigate, but that is the best place. It has the most current information on it. Um, and the Texas Workforce Commission Facebook page, they still do their news uh, broadcast, I think every other day, I think it's Monday, Wednesday, Wednesday Friday. Um, you can ask a question there, but you have to ask a journalist to ask a question for you. But a lot of questions do get answered there. Uh, and the comment stream is nonstop, um, uh, kind of, uh, uh, abuse of the, of the Texas Workforce Commission a lot of times. Um, so that can be entertaining too, I suppose. Um, and uh, we have our, our local 433 Musicians Unemployment Sharing page. That's the our local unions uh, page that we set up just to share info about unemployment for musicians because a lot of that info is new. Most of us never uh, never qualified before. So, um, yeah. And then we also have our COVID-19 resources page on our, our local unions uh, website, afm433.com slash COVID-19. Um, and who represents me uh, is the one, the website where you can find out who your representatives are. <coughs> we found that to be very, very important. Um, and then there's several links to uh, uh, petitions and letter writing campaigns um, that will help with all this. So, uh, yeah. All right, fellas, what are, what are we drinking today? Uh, I, I'm, I'm still doing coffee, as usual. Spring water. As you green, know. green tea in a blue cup. Oh, man, you guys are so consistent. I love it. Yes. <laughs> well, so are you. Yep, yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true, yeah. I think I, I had water a couple weeks ago, I think. But, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, usually coffee at this time of day. And, uh, yeah, we're just getting through it. We always do this at 1 p.m. So, yeah. All right. Well, um, gosh, fellas, let's, let's, let's rip into the news. I've, I've got a... Got a few things uh, pulled up here. Um, there was some more news yesterday, um, just kind of about the back and forth in Washington with the new aid package. Um, that uh, they're, I mean, the Democrats are still calling the Heroes Act. Um, the the Re Republicans have come up with a few names for an alternative, but they haven't been able to pass it. What What do you guys hear about that? Just that it's still ongoing. Well, from what I've seen, and I watched the uh, Senate leader adjourn the Senate. Yeah, it's it's all bye bye until next year. Yeah, that that is not a good sign. Yeah, there, there pretty much will be no decisions made until 
next year. Yeah, seems the, that the way. The agenda was to to get the Supreme Court nominee confirmed, and after that, that that was the end of their the agenda. It seems that way. Yeah, and they definitely did that in a hurry. Yeah, um, and too, if you, I don't know if you notice. But I think there's something wrong with our Senate leader. I mean, some, there's some, I mean, some oh, serious. Oh yeah, that, that has problems. been in the news. I mean, yes. His, I mean, his hands are blue, mm-hmm. and his lips are blue, and and he he just doesn't look healthy, and he's he swears he is, and you know he's up for re-election. So, yeah. but you know, I don't wish harm on anybody, but that guy does not look good. Yeah. Well, this has got to be an incredibly stressful time to be a legislator as it, I mean, as it should be like we, you know, we need them to go to work for us and, uh, Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But it, it looks like he's got some kind of disease. I mean, he's, yeah. he's ill yeah. with something. Yeah. That, and that's yeah. been in the news. Like, yeah. in, in at yeah. all different places, like not just one news source, not a, not like a fake news kind of thing, but, uh, yeah. All over the place. Right. I think CNN had covered that and, um, yeah, a lot of major. I think Fox News covered it even. So it's yeah. yeah I mean, it, 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 it's very noticeable. I mean, when 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 you saw it, you're like, wow, is he wearing a glove? And you, yeah, yeah, it looked really look, look bad. Oh, that's his real hand. Yeah, yeah. look bad. And some and band aids and stuff. Is, yeah. yeah, his face is all just discolored. Mm-hmm. So something. So I don't. I don't yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's all that. speculative at this point. But uh, yeah, we hope. Uh, Hope he's uh, all right to at least finish his term. Uh, I suppose. You know? <laughs> I mean, jeez, man. Uh, yeah. The, the so the news the news this week about the about the aid package at least though seems to center on uh, you know House <coughs> Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin, who is you know part yeah, of the, and, the, and, the Trump appointee. You know, yeah. The he he was saying that you know he's speaking directly for the. The administration so if they could broker a deal mm-hmm. the president would sign it but I, I don't know how that's feasible without you know the senate signing off on it i guess they're just going to bypass i don't know uh, yeah i think you're right I, I don't think it can bypass the senate really you know maybe they would call him back if mnuchin was able to make a deal or something i, I don't know yeah don't so know. it's a slim slim chance at this point i would say that there's going to be anything done it seems like it, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, unless, you know, I mean, unless, unless, uh, unless Donald Trump wins the election and wants to do a victory lap where he grants all the, all the aid packages or something. I, well, but it would seem like it would make would have made more sense for him to do it before the election. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. But, yeah, um, right. Oh my gosh. Yeah. For Absolutely. for a person who who really needs to invigorate or expand his base that's a missed opportunity yeah 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 <clears throat> yeah. yeah and there are i mean you know both sides the, the democrats and the republicans i mean they want things in that bill that don't have anything to do with aid i mean they have you know the republicans want all these protections for corporations and employers that would be awful i think for us uh for workers uh, and the Democrats, I mean, it's not like they don't have corporate interests either. Um, sure. But most of the things that they really want are, are things for workers. You know, it seems like so. Um, that's why most of the endorsements for, you know, labor are going their way. Um, but, yeah. Well, anyway, on that note, uh, we, we should probably talk about the voting. <laughs> we should, should probably schedule or, or uh, segue right into that. Uh, uh, today's the last day of early voting. And yes. And uh, Russell, you've been working those polls, right? Mm-hmm. God bless you. I, I, I wanted to do this for historic purposes and for educational purposes. I wanted to see what you know the youth, because they're the next generation and, and their their time is now. Would they really turn out in masses to assume the mantle? And from what I saw, yes. Really. Mm-hmm. That's good to hear. That's very good to hear. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Matt, how? How? Uh, I mean, how often have you been doing that? Every day. Every day of early yeah. voting. Oh my gosh! God bless you. 
Oh man, it's not bad. I mean, you know, it's been walking distance from my house, so I'll, I'll just walk over there for a few hours, and and it, it's kind of slowed down now because this is the last day. For yeah. You know, the big push will gear up for, for Tuesday when the national election it will well the national vote will take place. Yeah, yeah. I think your yeah, early voting. Already, Early voting tends right. to be like that, right? Where it starts, it starts real busy, and then kind of tapers off, and then there's a big push on election day. Is that seem to be kind of the pattern? Yeah, well, we've already shattered. Yes. Any kind of record that that was was held for Texas early voting, we we've shattered that, mm-hmm. and and have not looked back. All across the country. All across the country. Mm-hmm. It, yeah. just, it was. I mean, it was amazing to watch when, like I say, I, I wanted to do it for. And, and to see, you know, would, would would they step up and assume the mantle? And, and it's pretty impressive. Yeah, right on, man. Well, and some of that has to do with what Mark was doing uh, with the with the the vote forward Absolutely. campaign, Absolutely. right? I mean, how, w- did you receive replies from any of those folks that you were writing letters to, Mark? No, you don't put your mailing address. Oh, you, there, there, there's a central mailing address that you put as a return a, tr- a return address on those right, envelopes. That's right. Yeah. So you will never hear from the people, but um, they do track. Vote Forward does track some of the, I guess, a percentage of the people that are that mail is sent to. <clears throat> yes. You know, because they want to find out if it works. You know, yeah. If it, if it's functioning. And it's specifically targeting communities where they, yeah. they, yeah, they know yes. that folks are there that, that, that mm-hmm. aren't, you know, haven't voted, but can. And, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, all that's helping, I think, you know, and yeah. Uh, yeah, the, 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 the paper reported today, I think, uh, again, or maybe it was yesterday, that uh, Texas has already exceeded in early voting all the votes that were cast in 2016 mm-hmm. for Texas, <clears throat> at least. And I think that's happening in a lot of states. Yeah, people are ready. Yeah. Very ready to, to vote. Uh, yeah. yeah, we'll see what happens in the hurricane infected, in, I mean, afflicted states. Right. Yes. Because a lot of polling sites have no power. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's an issue. Yep. Oh, my gosh. And I have not heard, I don't know if you guys have, have heard, is there a contingency plan to, to get those votes? Well, they're, they're, they're talking about opening alternative sites in some states in other words sites where they have a generator or some kind of alternative power where they can but i don't think that that's actually been done yet i don't know yeah Yeah. wow well i mean yeah i think they're still in the cleanup or the the rescue part portion right well yeah they're trying to get the power back on for yeah a lot of people hundreds of thousands of people still don't have power oh my gosh yeah Including my son in New Orleans. God bless you. Oh, oh man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's he's coming here with his ballot tomorrow. Hey, there you go. He still man. votes in Texas, so he's he's ah. driving to Texas with his ballot. And he's going <laughs> to submit it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Zoics. Yeah. Well, and uh, there, there was a there was an article in the paper today um, entitled "Ask Politifact." Is it too late to mail in your ballot? Which I, I don't. I don't think we need to ask Politifact. I think it, it is too late to mail in your ballot now, right? You really should drop it off. What do you guys think about much, that? Much, 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 much safer to drop it off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, yeah. I mean, the post office has already admitted that they can't guarantee that mail that was mailed after a week ago is going to make it to the polling. And of course, it, it varies from state to state because some states will accept the mail and count the ballots after election day and some states mm-hmm. won't. Man. Yeah, the, I just read this morning that there was a, I don't know how factual this is, but it was on CNN's website. There was like 10,000 ballots missing in Pennsylvania. Oh, all right. right. Oh, geez, yeah. 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 Yeah, and everybody's, that that is a state that people are concerned about, right? Because it's, uh, it's well, it's 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 Butler County, which went seventy percent for Trump. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> so, yeah, but that that's one of the states where they, I think, their laws don't allow them to start counting the ballots until either election day or after election day. The day after, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it really, is different state by state. I think it is. So. Yeah. 
So yeah, a lot of folks are concerned about a couple of states like that, uh, and Pennsylvania is one of them because it's a big state. Yep. Yeah. So. I think that that goes back to your point that says you know. We might not know. The results. On the mm. third. Yes. Yeah. We may be, sitting in suspension for, I don't know, a couple of days. I don't know. Yeah. Well, and then if the Supreme Court steps in, we may never know. Mm. You know, I mean, there's a lot of doubt in my mind about how we're going to find out the results of this election and when. Mm. I mean, it's scary. It's a, it's a, you, we've never faced this before. I mean, we faced it with Gore in Florida, but, but that was after the fact. We didn't know that was going to be happening. Now this we kind of know, you know. This seems like a na nationwide yeah. problem. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm with you. Well, that leads into our, our the other story. The next story I've got here is uh, um, it's from today in the Statesman. Uh, it says the headline is Unha unhappy with response to May protests. Austin council members ask police ch police chief for election day safety plan. And so they're yeah they're talking about <clears throat> trying to ensure the safety of the the polling places in Austin. Mm -hmm. Apparently. Um, and that's a concern, and then there's also what they're they're talking about National Guard troops. That going was to on the table. Cities, yeah. <laughs> like what? Yeah. That. So, yeah, that really? is that's concerning. Yeah, but uh, I think it's good to talk about it beforehand because there won't be any time while it's happening. You know. That's, yeah, good point. So, yeah. Oh man. Have a plan and not meet it. Yep. And then there was also the uh, uh, the new challenge to, to try and avoid thousands of Harris County drive-through votes. There's an article about that as well. They're they're, they're still yeah. trying to trying to trying to discredit the drive-through voting, even though that was deemed legal. Uh, now there's there's a there's a Republican But the Texas challenge. Supreme Court overturned it. Right. Yeah. Yep. They signed it with the governor. Mm-hmm. Yep. But yeah, apparently there's a new there's a new challenge now, made by different people or something. And yeah, to those same same votes. And so now the question is, you know, do those votes count? And who, you know, geez, yeah, it's a mess. Yeah. So oh, here and here's the here's the other article I mentioned before. It says nine nine million have already voted in Texas, passing 2016's total. So that's good news. <laughs> yeah, a lot of that is thanks Nine to you million. guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a lot of people. That is a lot. Yeah, it's a big state. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. Um. Gosh. Uh. The, there's there's also a, an article. This this is kind of moving on from the voting topic, but uh, another article about the the state legislature. You know, comes back. Texas state legislature comes back mm -hmm. in in January. <laughs> And they're still looking for a place where they can all meet. They can all get in the same place because the, the capital is too tight. It's too close. You know, there's not enough room to social distance. So I assume they're looking for like a stadium or something or an arena. I don't know. Hmm. But that, that concerns us because we, we've, you know, we've had so many musicians trying to fix their unemployment. And the only way that they can get through to the TWC is to get a hold of a state senator Right. And get the TWC to call them, you know. Um, so that's that's of concern. If the legislature is not able to get back to work, that could really affect um, you know, <coughs> folks folks trying to get on unemployment. And we know there are still musicians out there that that haven't applied yet because they they haven't needed it yet, but they may need it over the winter because the winter is is definitely upon us this week. Holy cow! It got really cold this week. Even, you know, even for Texas. Yeah, I have a friend that lives in Iowa, and he said that they had five inches of snow. Whoa! <laughs> Yikes. That, that's, that's, that's brutal. Man, yeah. Five, five inches of snow, and then you're like, oh, come to Texas. We don't, we don't really have <laughs> <laughs> Not in this part of Texas, at least. Yeah. yeah we're unhappy if it gets, you know, the mid-30s. Five inches of snow? No, no thanks. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, man. Well, we, uh, I, I did want to mention we lost a couple of musicians again this week. Yes. Uh, with Jared Jeff Walker and Billy Joe Shaver. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's tough, tough losses, man. Yeah. Uh, I know Jerry Jeff Walker was a, a pretty high profile member of the union in the 70s and 80s, I think. And um, yeah, I'm not sure about Billy Joe, but yeah, they'll be missed. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Billy Joe, a uh, great songwriter. Man. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Fantastic yeah. songwriter. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, but but there's there's some up there's some uh, some good news. Uh, some of the clubs are able to open up the hole in the wall. There's an article about the hole in the wall in the paper uh, opening up on Monday. I think they said, um, you know, and they they're doing the thing where they're they're serving food. You know, they're they're kind of getting around the restrictions by serving food. Um, it does say what masks must be worn upon entrance and during bar ordering. And may be taken off while seated. <laughs> so they're still doing the bar ordering. They're not doing the table service, which is, that's still the state recommendation. That's the safest way to do it is to do table service, but it takes more employees, and the bars don't usually have them. So, yeah. Um, who else? Uh, Empire, looks like Empire Control Room and ACL Live have both also done that as well. They got around the restrictions by doing the food thing. So, you know. What do you guys what do you guys think about that? Have, have you played any of those places that are like newly restaurants? <coughs> any of that? Nope. Uh, I played Antones, but oh. I, I didn't see any food there. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, not, I'm not sure how they got around that, but they must have done something. I don't know. I, I've heard some counties you can do it just by like you just you, you sell a bag of peanuts with every drink or something. But yeah. other counties, I think it's by county the way that you can get around it. And, I, and I've heard from some bars that, that weren't <coughs> able to figure it out. Like they were trying to sort of decode what they could do in order to do it. And they just gave up because they couldn't figure mm-hmm. out how to actually skirt that, that restriction. So, um, but yeah, as far as I know, our, our county here in Travis County is, is uh, uh, bars are still officially closed unless they can pivot into that restaurant thing, that restaurant category. Um, so we'll see. Yeah. But I'm glad Antones is able to do something because that's, that's definitely an important, uh, important club to, to the scene here. And yeah, yep, man. Um, what else here? Oh, uh, there's a, there's a new show about Austin. Um, you guys heard about this? Uh, it's called that animal rescue show. It was all filmed as another Richard Linkletter thing, the guy that did Slacker and all those those movies. Um, I haven't yeah. heard that. Yeah, it's, a, it's about you know the different animal rescue groups in Austin. But the cool thing is that it has a lot of Austin music on it. Uh, and the article in the Statesman here, actually it's on Austin 360. Um, they list some of the some of the musicians. Yeah, uh, what's a uh, Wild Child. Uh, Alejandro Escovedo, Explosions in the Sky, Sweet Spirit, Black Angels, and some others um, are on there. But that show is on CBS All Access, which is hmm. CBS's streaming channel, not the broadcast channel. Right. What that means, cool. and we've been talking about this the last couple of years with the AFM, what that means is that there's no, there's no automatic residual for music that's composed for those shows. But if, if, you're, if the music is already recorded on a union contract then there can be a residual sometimes so um that's another example of, of uh, yeah union contracts so some of those bands have have recorded on union contracts and they're they're going to be paid better uh, as a result of that so that's that's just something another thing to watch out for in the in the pandemic it no reason to get it on a union not to get it on a union contract because uh they, they realize they the benefits sure now. yeah yes indeed so yeah but uh, but yeah, we have heard from some of those musicians, and that's that's uh, that's always good. That's always a, a, a heartening thing <laughs> to get musicians paid. So yeah, um, gosh, the the next thing I've got is uh, yeah the new the new lockdown lockdown stuff uh, news from Europe. What is that? Spain, Germany, France, um, Switzerland. We're even hearing that are doing some new lockdowns because of. Uh, the was it thirty days? They were they were going to do that, or did they, I, did they give a total? I think it was. I think maybe Germany said something about a thirty day limit or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't know what that. You know, of course, you use the word lockdown and like, what does that mean, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. 
it, it means all different things, you know. Um, but uh, depending on what co country you're in, but it's it's uh, because of the winter, you know, because the, the winter's coming back in the northern hemisphere. So, you know, New Zealand it's summer, right? So they're, <laughs> they're a little better off down there. But um, and then there's there's but there is also news uh, today about uh, Chihuahua, the 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 province of Chihuahua in Mexico. Uh, is doing uh, a, a, a new lockdown because of a spike there, you know, and that, I mean, that probably is because of the winter, but it ain't that cold there, you know, in Mexico, um, but, yeah, we'll see, uh, they says, yeah, Mexico's northern border state of Chihuahua returned to the highest level of alert in lockdown Friday, so, yeah, so. Well, I mean, El Paso's locking down. That's right, yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they're having a spike out there. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And it's not that cold out there either, right? I mean, I guess that that's a spike that's there. that's higher elevation out there. So maybe maybe it's a yeah. I guess it, it is probably getting a little cold, but yeah, yeah, scary stuff, man. Yeah. Um, the last news article I wanted to wanted to make sure I mentioned uh, was uh, was more more uh, news about the. Uh, the California state law that's making the Uber and Lyft drivers, uh, it's, it's requiring them to be treated as employees, you know. Um, and, of course, they've been fighting the heck out of this, you know, and, and uh, <coughs> California courts keep, uh, you know, overturning it and returning it and all this stuff. Uh, so this one says a, a California court uh, or a California appeals court on Thursday upheld an order requiring Uber and Lyft to treat their California drivers as employees instead of independent contractors. And, mm -hmm. you know, of course, why is this important for musicians to follow? I mean, sure, yeah, a lot of a lot of musicians do this, yet they, they drive these cars, you know, on the side as a side gig. But um, but this is what happened to musicians and clubs in 1978, where we were reclassified as contractors and we, mm -hmm. we weren't required to be <clears throat> uh, employees anymore. And we lost a lot of bargaining benefits and that's uh sort of the beginning of our 40-year slide in uh compensation in nightclubs you know in a lot of ways so well that got, guess, we haven't got a raise since then yeah yeah that's right they, yeah. they haven't had to yeah 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 man you guys heard anything about that 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 uh reclassification thing or? yeah that, that I, i've read that and you know it's they, now they have to kind of pay them benefits and, and kind of take care of them. But the drivers were like, well, we like it the other way because we could set our own schedule. And, and you know, this mm -hmm. is kind of like my second job. And, and so I'm quite yeah. sure. Yeah, sometimes the work. sometimes the, the workers sort of work against their, their own interests in some ways just because they, they don't understand, you know, how that how that change would work, you know. Yeah. Well, and it may be that the tax situation is set up to yeah. where it may favor some workers remaining as contract workers and not being full, full employees. Yeah, I don't, know, I don't know how it works in California, but uh, yeah, yeah, <clears throat> that's an issue. Yeah, it is. Yeah, we, you know, and even with our, our unemployment situation with musicians, you know, we know this has been an issue, especially in, in California and New York. You know, they're they're strong union states. You know, when musicians have union work, you know, when they have really good work, they're, they're employees. They work as employees in those states. You know, when they play on the TV shows and stuff like that, or they play on the movie soundtracks, they're, they're employees. But then all their other work, especially their nightclub work, they're, they're contractors, you know, and, and probably a lot of their recording work, too. Um, they're contractors. So then they have that mixed income that we've been talking about, and that, that, that's the hardest to, to get uh, unemployment assistance with you know when you have both when you have w-2s and 1099s that's the hardest nationwide and so that that's hit hit those musicians really hard you know uh in in some ways uh, according to how the the states have adapted their unemployment systems so yeah so we we hear you know a lot of a lot of stuff about a lot of news about that from musicians um you know, just that, that distinction between employees and, and contractors. Um, yeah. Well, and it's not just musicians. I mean, if you look oh, no. at yeah. people who 
teach or work, you know, staff or whatever in university systems and stuff like that, there, the trend there has been to replace full-time workers with part-time workers, <clears throat> yes. which means that part-time workers don't get benefits. Yes. Yep. Basically. Yeah. So yeah. And a lot of times it's, they it's the same get... idea, you know, it's the yeah. same concept, which is, you know, keep people working, but don't pay them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got that right, brother. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of those situations with contractors, especially that there's no social security contributions being made which is right. starving social security number one, but it's also not, not providing those people a future, you know, when they retire, you know, and if they don't have those contributions and, and it's uh, yeah, it's like this, this double edged sword that we've been, you know, we've been trying to fight against in the labor movement for the last 40 years or so. Um, but yeah, we really got to pay attention to it now because it's, yeah, it, the pensions are all getting, getting bad the, the social security is getting you know to be in danger and yeah so yeah you've got to keep an eye on it <laughs> that's for sure man well uh i guess the the, the main topic uh, is still still unemployment um do you guys hear, hear anything else about about unemployment assistance or i wish i, I wish i was hearing more <laughs> right yes yeah there's just not much going on yeah um, yeah, I think the the main thing that we can all do is is still vote today or Tuesday. Yeah. There are the days in Texas at least. Certainly put put your voice down, but still I mean like like we've been saying, I mean if if you're in there I mean stay in there and keep the correspondence up. Yeah. Yeah, you mean in the unemployment system. Yeah. Yes, yep. yeah. Yeah, keep making the claims every every year. Yeah. Uh, what do they call it? the the uh Payment request. Payment request. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Make that every every two weeks, you know, and yeah, hopefully the, the next aid package when it comes out will be retroactive to at least when when the LWA cut out, you know, the Lost Wages Assistance right, Program, yeah. um, hopefully. And that was September. So, um, yeah, hopefully there's there's more help coming. Um, I think there's got to be. I mean, there's there just there just needs to be, especially with the swelling of the of the of the virus right now um you know that that's going to be the only way I, I think even 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 the, the the big business folks will realize that the only way to really save the economy is to pull it up from the bottom up you got to support the workers yeah you, you have to I mean, yeah there's, there's just no other way I mean. yeah the workers are the consumers you know the workers are the the renters you know <laughs> all that stuff you know um the well, there, landlords can't survive without the renters there's a picture on, on, on CNN's website where, you know, these sheriffs are kicking people out of their house. Wow. And they interviewed this one sheriff. And he said, you know, actually, my brother's on this list. Wow. So he's got to go evict his own brother. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean that's like that's like Civil War era stuff, you know, brothers he, fighting exactly. brothers, you know. That's yeah. Oh my gosh. And he he was saying that you know there, there's there's no guarantee that he won't be on that list mm -hmm. because he, he has a hard time making it. Yeah. Wow. Jeez. Man. Well, that that brings up a good point, man. I'm glad you said that. Um, maybe next week we should talk about um, the eviction protection because um, you have to be able to. In order to take advantage of it, you have to apply for it, right? There's, right, there's a couple right. little things in there. I'll find some stuff out about that, um, and let's let's talk about that next week. Um, mm -hmm. And then also next week, we probably, whatever happens on Tuesday, <laughs> um, we'll definitely have to talk yeah. about uh, work search requirements. Of course, not for us because union members don't have to do work search requirements for TWC, but uh, but some musicians may may need to do that, and uh, it, it's not that hard to do. You just have to document it and. Uh, and that's it's it's all things that we all kind of do automatically anyway. So we'll probably should talk about that next week. In addition to whatever other news happens, hopefully some big news will happen <laughs> in the next week. So yeah. All right. Well, do you guys have anything anything else to, to mention this week? No, nope. don't think so. All right. Well, I appreciate y'all being there. I, I'm Aaron. This is uh, Russell and Mark, and uh, we'll see y'all next week. Yep. Thank you. See ya. Thanks, guys. Have a good week. All right, beautiful.